Hey everybody, welcome back. Trudy's our next presenter and she's going to help us look at our temporary leave like a project. So Trudy, take it away. Thank you, Denise. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Trudy Madden. And as Denise said, I'm, I was a project manager and I was working full time and caring for my mom and dad. Uh, my dad had Parkinson's at the time. So I use my background as a project manager to give me insights on what I did when I had to take my leave, but also um, when I was actually counseling some of the people in my team, some of them over time had to take some time for their caregiving responsibilities. So it was important that I really step back, understood what they were going through and also be able to uh, guide them as well. So some of the tools that I'll go into are project management tools but you can refine them or you can look at them from an overview standpoint and say, how can they help me achieve what I need to do? And a lot of this, um, both Denise and Kathy already approached from the standpoint of thinking through, really looking at what's available from the, the standpoint of the um, benefits but also I'm going to cover um, really how to approach your, your coworkers and your management. So we'll start from there. Um, I want you to just think about where you are actually in your caregiving responsibilities, because that will make a difference so often about where you're positioning your leave, who's impacted by your leave, what timeline are you looking for? Um, will you require taking a block of time or can you do some intermittent uh, leave as far as what your responsibilities are? What your game plan is now, but what's your backup plan in case you need to take a longer time? So again, are you just beginning your caregiving responsibilities? Is it that you need to be available for mom and dad maybe during their shopping for groceries? Maybe it's just periodically once a week, or are you available to take them for their doctor visits maybe a little more often? Perhaps you're now fully entrenched in what is your caregiving world. You're there, you have to check on them every night when you go home. You wanna make sure that those that are doing the care, if they're living independently at home, you want to keep an eye on that. You know, how's it going? Is everyone showing up when they need to? Are the, the caregivers uh, fulfilling their part of the, the responsibilities as well? And perhaps at the end, um, when we're, we're thinking about the end of our carry's life, are we available on a full-time basis or is this something that you're not really there yet and you don't quite know what to expect, but it all makes a difference. So let's take a look at the beginning stages. Again, mentioning that it's just a periodic responsibility that you have. You can plan through this. You can go shopping for them after your full day of work or you can do it on the weekends. But let's take a look at the point where the you're seeing just a being prepared for this. It's a temporary time when you're seeing a decline in your caries health. Perhaps their independence is a little shaky at this point. Um, and I go to this point about, are they still driving? Perhaps that's something you're, you're worried about, but they're giving that up gradually. And then perhaps you're also thinking about are they able to live independently now? Or am I going to have to spend some time looking for an assisted living facility? Do I have to really go and be an, um, take a tour, talk to the people that are in these facilities just to understand what I'm dealing with, what, what is available to me and to them? Uh, their care status, again, being available to meet with the home care agencies or any of the other resource people that are coming in, your, your physical therapist or your um, OT personnel. 
or are you dealing with maybe a current crisis? Um, Denise mentioned a few in her presentation, but those things that trigger could perhaps be that hospitalization. I remember when my dad fell several times, in fact, but it always triggered this, this crisis point that I had to drop what I was doing to be available to them. So again, at this point, I, I consider this, you're, you're kind of preparing for what's coming down. So I say, just consider some other options at first. Kathy mentioned a few of these, but your work hours. Um, are, do you have the flexibility to maybe work for part of your day and then deal with what you have to deal, but then work the rest of your time in the evening? Do you deal with something which I call a project-based work? And that's, do you know that things are due at the end of the week or at the end of the month? Can you separate out your work hours to be uh, very flexible for your needs as well? Maybe it's the location you're working at. And sometimes um, there are many offices for a company and you've been commuting to one that's fairly far away, but maybe you can have your responsibilities essentially located something that offers you a commute that's, that's not as uh, far from that other location. And you can just report into that closer location. Gives you a little bit more flexibility in your other responsibilities. I think COVID offered real insight into working from home. Perhaps also employers are seeing this and can this be something we can tap into in a greater way? Um, even some jobs that we didn't think could be work from home offer some of those the flexibilities there. And I do believe it was Kathy mentioned um, something called job sharing. And, and this was something really intriguing for a while. Um, it was something where you found someone that had similar skill sets. I was able to find another manager, in fact, when I was uh, doing this, but who had similar uh, expertise as I did, similar skill set. And we were kind of going back and forth on whether we could work part time each and then share one job. So this was something that we, we kind of bounced around and it may be something to explore in your situation. Uh, employee assistance programs, again, look into those benefits at first and see what's available. As Kathy mentioned, very important to do this if you have the time ahead. So I wanna just pivot a little bit to say, let's take a look if you're actually fully entrenched in caregiving now on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to be there to see and, and be part of that uh, hands-on care. You have to be there for the managing those medications that your mom or dad are taking all the way to the end of life stages where it's really a matter of how much time is left. How can I manage that and be fully present in that? When looking at that, this is where you, you want to step back and say, do I need a block of time that can help me be present and yet step away from my job responsibilities? It's not a matter of maybe that intermittent time where I can take a day off a week that would work for me to be available to my care to be present at their doctor visits or to be able to help them with the things that they need. But now it's time to take that block of time in order to be present and, and fully be able to be that person who coordinates the care services that they're receiving at home. And going again to that, perhaps that limited time left if it's an end of care situation, end of life, excuse me, end of life uh, situation. Here I say to um, really tap into what Kathy mentioned, that all the opportunities for utilizing PTO time. Some companies for a while there were, they were separating out what you had for your, your uh, vacation time. 
versus sick time versus uh, overall what they call a PTO time. So if that's available, perhaps that's uh, in working with HR, this is maybe something that you can utilize as your beginning block of time. Then at the same time, filing that paperwork to be able to use your paid and unpaid leaves as appropriate for where what state you're in. Uh, I'm in New Jersey, so part of the Family Medical Leave Act is is a, was appropriate during my time, and this. It was a little tricky, and again, it's it's changed over time. But I was able to use my PTO and then go into those paid benefits. The the more important thing for me was making sure that I had a job. At the end of the day, there was a guarantee there that my job was there. It was not a guarantee that it would be the same job, but it would be something that was similar and on the same sort of a lateral level. Uh, for when I was returning to work. And I always ask this as well, like who's impacted when you actually take your leave? If you're just doing your intermittent, I need a day here, I need a couple days here to get them situated and all that. But if you're looking at your block of time, you wanna consider, yes, of course your carry is going to benefit from that. Um, I say, hopefully that, that that's the case, but your coworkers and all that revolve around your work situation are also going to be impacted by that. And I want to caution here. I, I, I view my words to you all as um, from the standpoint of I worked with directly with clients and we had a project that was due to them, for example. So I'll say that, yes, my clients were very important. They knew when I was available, when I was not. And that I carry through with the rest that I'm going to uh, describe to you. And I always say, what, what were you feeling? What are you feeling now? What I was feeling at the time was, wow, pulled in so many different directions. I was um, fully drained from the expectations of what those clients or my, my job responsibilities were overwhelmed. But in my case, I was pretty guilty. Uh, actually, when I actually took my leave, I, I kept thinking, did I do enough to prepare my team? Did I do enough to give them the ins and outs and the real fine details that were needed for them to pick up where I left off on certain job responsibilities? Did they know enough? Were they um, just prepared enough? And I always felt like, wow, I could have probably done more uh, had I had the time. This is where I go into, do I have enough time? So I asked, what's your timeline? There's what I call the emergency leave. I need to run out the door now. My dad fell. My mom was calling from the emergency room and boy, did I have to just drop what I was doing and leave. Or do you actually have time to plan things out? It makes a difference both to you and to your team. So that emergency leave, um, I use this example, of course, I, dad fell, he wasn't seriously injured, but he was gonna need a little bit of time to work with the physical therapist and, and just get back on his feet where he was able to, to walk on his own. And I knew I had a few days I could plan for this, but I just got a call and they said, no, he's, we're done. He's, he's gonna be discharged tomorrow. I was like, yikes, okay, I'm not really prepared. Now, what do I do? How do I really go from here? And first thing in my mind was I had to talk to my boss and to really get a feel for, is it doable that I can take a few more days than I thought or just leave for a couple of hours today and come back? But this was something that was um, I wasn't prepared for on that particular day. So I said, what's, what's your emergency leave game plan? Again, can you do those things that are right out, certainly in our benefit package, uh, including our PTO and our sick time? Could I do that for a few days? Which I did. Could I then tap into some unpaid time? So that was questionable there. But I, I go back to 
always keeping that communication uh, piece open. Certainly your boss does not want to be caught saying she just left. I don't know where things are with this project. No one told me, no one gave me an update. Please just think, I always step back and had to say, was I professional enough? Did I have that top of my mind to understand that my boss was perhaps going to be left in that lurch of me running out the door? So I didn't want that to happen. I had it in the back of my mind that I had to think ahead. Do you have enough time to prepare? In my case, perhaps the next time, yes, my dad was in rehab for now, but I knew my game plan was to bring him home and have him live independently, bring him to my house for a while, and then hopefully they could still go back to their own home and be independent. So at this time, I had a little bit of breathing room and I said, I've got to check in depth of all the company policies. So I knew them, what I had to do ahead of time, how much lead time they needed it once I started uh, applying for these things. And Kathy, I thank you for all that you provided. That That's a great thought that you need to get that paperwork going as soon as possible. Keep interacting with your HR department but certainly keep speaking to your manager. The other important part was um, submitting this in writing, actually giving that heads up notice to your management, of course, copying your, your HR department, but making sure that they had it in writing. You expected to be out. For example, um, I think at one point it was, you know, whatever, I think it was two weeks at a time I was doing just to get them situated. But I did put it in writing. And again, that advance notice was so much, um, so beneficial to all involved. The last point I put was offer to help. Um, this came to me, it was more about having that time to plan. And I thought if my manager needed to bring in additional help, contractors or temporary help to continue working on our project and get that so we were able to meet all the timeline and deliverables for the client. How could I help? And I, I thought, let me help by being um, available to interview the contractors to put through the exact spe uh, specifications that we needed and to help that my boss in that transition to train that person in advance and to also make sure that everything was transferred as far as the information. At this point, I take a, a little step back because as a project manager, using SMART goals was, was always what we relied on. And so I say the SMART goal stands for a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound things that are all part of a project. Becoming the foundation of that successful project, I ask, okay, so in my case, I take a look at what was the specific things that were going on. So for specific, I say, how specifically can my team be able to complete my part of the project while I'm gone? The first and most important things I did was I created a to-do list for them. It had all of the things on there that were uh, very detailed. It explained how to do them, what the priorities were on when they were due and, and how to accomplish them. I knew in one case, I actually com uh, completed a spreadsheet for the client. I was really the only one that was doing it at the time, but I actually provided the template for the spreadsheet. I provided the instructions how to, uh, where to post it on the client's website when this was uh, completed. So all that, the how to's for the team member that was going to be responsible for this, it was, it was really important at the time. Second part is, is it measurable? So I, I say, how do, will 
we know that these deliverables are all being uh, met and where where are they in the process? Part of the, the projects were to also have a summary. I provided this and I said what where we are now and when are things due. Was it attainable for my team to actually jump in and do this without me being on site and present to do this? And I thought, yes, it is. If I train them and if I mentored them, even if it was that temporary staff coming in. But again, I had to think back, was I doing this on an ongoing basis or is this something that was completely out of the blue? And I thought, wow, how important was it that I was doing an ongoing training all along and it, it really helped in the long run. The R for relevant. And I had to think, well, where does this leave the clients? Where does this leave my company when I'm on leave? That's really important. It's relevant to them to be um, doing this without skipping a beat when I'm gone. And I know that sounds, um, you know, it's doable if it's planned out. So our client relationship had to be reviewed, what they expected, who they looked at. If I wasn't there, who was the contact person going to be? So with my manager, we work to be uh, looking at all of those team members and who was best fit to be that person to step in. And I look at this, this piece right here, uh, it goes actually to the next one is time bound, but by providing ongoing growth and mentorship opportunities for the entire team, this was offering a lot of different um, skill sets that other team members could actually step up and fill. And in turn, they were growing and this was helping in their job performance and, and um, everything down the road for them as well. So that actually could become and turned around to be a positive thing for your team members. So Just a heads up, you've got three minutes. Thank you. Again, trust your team and they will help meet the, the, um, the deliverables. Someone mentioned before checking, uh, if you're out on leave, you still can check emails. You can still know what's going on and if possible, informally check in. Not always possible, but I say look to those that have similar skill sets as that temporary void fill um, and that will help. Again, transfer that knowledge because it can be easily lost. You can lose confidence. Your clients can say, Who's in, who has this information right now? Why weren't we told about this? But we don't want that to happen. So you, it's always the, um, thinking ahead. And again, the new dynamic is that other person is going to have that information and step to fill your, your absence. I created a to-do list for myself, but again, overall, you can do this as well. Checking through, did you complete all that paperwork and come up with a plan with your manager? Did you notify your team members and your clients? What about the transferring of all the specifics of your projects? That helps. The end result, um, again, your backup plan, if you have to take time that's longer than you anticipated, perhaps that decline is really the end of life stages. Can you afford, as, as Denise mentioned, financially, can you do it? How am I going to make this work? if I have to leave my job or if the timing is just so long, there's no benefits left. So you've got one minute. Again, your, your long range plan is so important, but ask for help, ask for help. If we had time, we could take an, uh, just a, a little chat, uh, sorry, in the chat room to see where does this leave you? Do you have time to plan? Hopefully you do, but if you have to take that emergency leave, you need to circle around for those benefits. Really, truly important because you don't know when the next shoe will, will fall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I always get a little bit uh, on the long side, but I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, Trudy. Thank you so much.
And so now we're going to move to Carolyn. I'm just going to stop the recording for just a minute, Carolyn, and then Carolyn's going to help us with our recovery plans. <laughs> 